Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com, and I'm back with another Sketch and Tune tutorial in Cinema 4D, of course. And today I'm going to be going over how to animate on an object using MoGraph. So for those of you who may be new to Cinema 4D and want to, you know, create little 2D line art style icons and animate them very easily, I'll go over that. Uh, but the main thing I'm going to go over is how to actually animate on sketch and tune lines and have them draw on like you would uh, in After Effects, like a 2D stroke and animate on the uh, line offset and stuff like that. So I'm going to be showing you all those options in sketch and tune, the draw options in sketch and tune. And we'll be creating this little animation where we have a skateboard animate on and does a little kickflip kind of dealy. I don't skateboard at all. I'm just a poser. Uh, just making 3D objects of them, but we have the uh, skateboard kind of animate on using MoGraph, and then you can see our sketch and tune lines draw on and animate on. And uh, the workflow for this is kind of there's a lot of gotchas and things to watch out for, and I'll go over all of that in this tutorial. So let's get started. Okay, so we have our skateboard here, and here are all the pieces of the skateboard and I have them all underneath this skateboard group null so everything's in this one null and to animate this uh, we're just gonna do something really simple we're gonna place all of our objects into a fracture object or place it underneath a fracture object we're gonna go into the fracture object and to make these pieces actually recognized by an effector as separate pieces we need to actually change the object mode from straight to explode segments. So this is going to kind of explode out all of these individual objects. So our wheels, our board, all this good stuff is going to be then exploded out and then we can animate the objects individually with effectors. So now with our fracture object we can start applying MoGraph effectors to animating all these objects. So what I'm going to do is just go into our uh, plane effector and grab that and you can see that by default we have the position in the positive 100 and you can already see that we have some movement going on so what I want to do is go and change our fall off on our plane effector to linear so we can then control this with a fall off a linear fall off so you can see as I move the fall off through our object. It's animating each individual piece here one by one uh, and separately and you can see everything kind of animating on or moving at least uh, in the Y position that we set in our plane effector. So what we now want to do is we can start you know spicing this up a little bit. We actually want all this stuff to animate on so what we can do is just have everything kind of scale up. So we'll go and give a negative one scale value so we can see as the fall off comes in, everything kind of scales in and moves up. And I'm also going to give it a greater value in the Y, so maybe 200 in the Y so we actually have a lot more movement here. And maybe we can just add like a subtle rotation value here, maybe like negative 60 or so. And we just have a subtle uh, rotation value going on there. Now the one thing to keep in mind with uh, using the fracture object and just having objects underneath the fracture object in general is you notice that some of my objects are moving upwards and some of them are moving downwards and you might be wondering well why is that happening if you had a positive 200 value in the Y so what's going on is all these individual objects are being pushed in that Y direction 200 depending on the axis alignment or the way the uh, the Y axis is positioned on each object so you can see that the cylinders or let me actually move this plane effector out of the way you can see these little screws here these cylinders are facing upwards but you can notice that my other objects the the screws on the bottom underneath are uh, that's kind of holding together the fork for the wheels are on the bottom and that's facing downwards. So it's remember our plane effector is pushing in a positive Y depending on the orientation of your object it's gonna push it a different direction so you can kind of play around with the uh, the orientation of your objects and which direction they're pointing to have 
objects move in opposite directions with just one uh, plane effector. So since this y, this, this object, the cylinder's positive y is facing down, that is why as I move the plane effectors fall off here, you can see that those cylinders are moving down as well as those wheels. So that was all premeditated. I wanted all of those wheels to be facing downwards in the Y. So you can kind of set your scene up and kind of pre-plan how you want your objects to animate on by adjusting your uh, objects orientation there. Uh, so now we can actually, uh, with this, we can go and I'm going to go to object uh, coordination, uh, coordination, coordin <laughs> coordin coordinate system. God. And I'm going to rotate this. And you kind of see that we are getting uh, different objects animating on first, depending on how our, our linear effector is passing through. So say you want, uh, if I angle it this way, you can see that the board's going to come on first and then the wheels, but actually what I want to do is have this orientation a little bit uh, angled so the wheels come on first, as you can see here, and then the board comes on. So then when I animate this, I'm going to go back to uh, uh, object coordinate system. So this just kind of controls, you can see that this, uh, by default, it's set to object, and since I rotated it, that Y is going to be facing a different direction depending on the uh, rotation values I actually gave it. But if you go to world system, it's going to snap to just the normal world coordinate system that you can see right here. So now I can actually move this plane effector with that rotation, and then I can just keyframe it like this. So I'm going to start by keyframing my plane effector in the Y, and let's, let's give it, let's start it. Frame zero, I'll drag that over there, and by, by frame 45, I want this effector to fully pass through the object and fully animate it on. I'm going to set another keyframe, and now I can get out of the world coordinate system and hit play, and you can see that, yay, my skateboard is animating on, but it looks fairly boring. Uh, what we can do is, uh, number one, I'm going to close this up, fold up everything. What what we can do is go and add another effector, add a random effector, and we're not going to use any uh, parameters here. I'm going to turn the position off, but what we can do is actually use this if we apply the random effector first before the plane and just add a random weight to everything. So this will kind of randomize how things are weighted and how things are timed as they're coming on. So you can see as I move this weight transform, uh, give it a higher strength value, you can see that some of my objects aren't fully coming on yet. And you can actually see that at the start of my animation, we already have some objects already animated on. We can actually clamp that to not have a negative random value, but just positive random value. So what's happening now is that since we have this negative minimum, we're having negative random values. So some of these things will actually be fully animated on. So we can clamp that by bringing the minimum to zero. And you can see that now we're just constrained to positive random values. So you're not actually getting a negative animation. So like animations already happened at frame zero. So now what we can do is just bring down the weight transform a little bit. And you can see that this randomizes the timing of how things come on. So you can see that things are animating on in a slightly different uh, timing. So that looks a little bit more interesting. And you can kind of, whoop, actually got to turn that on, geez. Uh, and now you can see that things are kind of animating on a little bit differently. So now what we can do is kind of finish this whole animation off by adding a do, 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 delay effector. And this is just going to smooth everything out. Uh, and so strength of 50 is good. So just want to make sure that's applied and it's applied after everything. And if I hit play, you can see that here is our animation. So that looks 
a little bit better, but you can see that at the end here, not all of our screws are quite on there yet. And that's because the delay effector uh, kind of messes with timing a little bit. So what I can do to fix that is to just go to my plane effector and make sure that, and actually the random effector kind of mess with this as well. Uh, you just need to make sure that you position this plane effector far, far enough away so that it totally, and if I turn off my delay effector here, <clears throat> uh, it should, yep. Okay, so we just wanna make sure that all of our objects are fully in their correct position and then record a new keyframes to make sure that our fall off is fully passed through uh, keeping in mind that we added that random effector kind of threw everything off a little bit so we needed to push the plane effector a little bit further so it formed all the objects and now we can hit play and this is all easy stuff I'm sure you guys already know how to animate stuff on but for those of you who might be new to all this making you know 2d icons or line art in cinema 4d this is a really easy way to animate objects uh, by throwing all of your objects into a fracture object and then applying your effector. So we have our animation all set and good to go. Now what we want to do is, if I have this rendered, we have the uh, sketch and tune apply or sketch and tune lines applied onto this. And since we have our object animating on, we can also have our strokes, our our sketch and tune lines actually draw on like a 3D stroke in After Effects and actually animate how our strokes kind of circle around and form the complete uh, outline here. So I'm going to double click on my Sketch and Tune Material Editor here and we have a few options on you know when we want to actually animate this. Actually the first thing I'm going to do is go into my Sketch and Tune options and I want to actually see the lines in my viewport here so you can kind of see that uh, let's see yeah we'll do yeah 2d lines will be fine so now we can actually see our lines and hopefully you guys can see this in my viewport so we can actually see how these things are animating on so the first thing I want to go over when you're animating your strokes is in the strokes options in your sketch and tune material you have a few options that you can change that will affect on that will affect how your uh, strokes will or how your lines will kind of draw on. So this is similar to you know in After Effects, the stroke line starts at the beginning of a mask path uh, and all that good stuff. So what this these options here like start right now it's at the bottom. So what it's going to do is start at the very bottom most part of your object then that is where the stroke is going to start to animate on from so say you know since this is this uh, it'll start at the bottom and the direction of the stroke will be clockwise we'll actually have it start here and then it will start drawing on clockwise from this point so you can change the start from bottom to say top or inner outer random you can do that uh, so I'm going to just going to change this to uh, top so this is the topmost point so this is where our object will animate on from and then uh, we can actually have this animate on uh, let's just say direction up so what will happen uh, with this is that it'll kind of choose uh, from this point and kind of go up I'm not sure how that really works, uh, but I think it'll start and just kind of go this way and also start and go up that way. I don't know. Let's just do, let's see. I actually want to animate it to go from this point counterclockwise. So we'll just do counterclockwise and not up. That was a little bit confusing. I'm not sure how that would work, uh, but we'll do counterclockwise. And the next thing we can do is go to the Animate tab and actually enable this draw here. So what this will do is enable us to choose all our draw modes and all that stuff. So what you typically want to do for this kind of line art workflow is just choose Draw out uh, of these options. And our stroke order, uh, we can choose a bunch of different options here. And the one thing that you can kind of choose to do is think about how you want your objects to animate on so you can see that we have our object 
kind of animating on from uh, bottom to top, so it's going up. So we can actually have our stroke order kind of mimic how our objects are coming on. So since everything is coming from the bottom of the screen to the top, except for that board, uh, we can actually choose the stroke order to go from the bottommost strokes to the top. So we can start it like that. And the method we can use is you can either have things draw on stroke by stroke, or you can have all of your strokes draw on simultaneously. And that's, that's a mode I like to use uh, a lot just to have everything animate on at the same time. So the next thing is draw speed. And there's a bunch of different options here. Uh, you can actually have this kind of draw on uh, and just draw on through this the whole entire animation with this setting or just the end frame. You can choose the end frame and this will kind of just draw on from frame 0 to 150 or whatever frames that you want to kind of put in here. Uh, but the one thing I like to use is this total time. And what this does is allows you to actually animate these objects or animate these strokes without any keyframes. So you can just have them animate uh, by the values you put in here. So the start is just what frame do you want the objects to start on or the strokes to start drawing on at. And so let's just say uh, we'll start at frame 15. Uh, and the one thing... I want to kind of go over. Let's just go to our timeline and let's choose to, uh, right now we have this ease in, ease out. Let's get rid of that and just make these uh, linear keyframes so it's just a constant speed there. So the, the gotcha with animating strokes on, and I'm gonna show you a little example, is, so this is a render that when I was kind of testing this workflow, that I made, and you can see right here, as everything's coming on, this stroke kind of jumps, and it's very stuttery. And the reason why, it's kind of a, a buggy thing that you kind of have to work around with this kind of workflow, and it's a little bit of a gotcha that I've just come to work around, is to avoid those kind of jumps in the strokes, is these occur when an object kind of overlaps another object. So you can see these screws start to come in and overlap our board. And that is why it's kind of jumping around. So typically what you want to do is have these strokes draw on when your objects are close to being uh, coming to their resting position. So what I ended up having to do to fix this is, ha is change the animation of when the because the only thing that's really given me an issue, and you can kind of see some popping on the on the wheels, but it's not very noticeable. Uh, but you can really notice it in the on the board here. So there's two things you can do. One is to animate your strokes on, or have them start to animate on, right where our objects are coming almost to their final resting space. And two, what you can do is if your wheels look fine, but the board is kind of coming on janky, you can actually use two sketch material objects and have them animate on at separate times. So we can have the wheels animate on first and then apply a second line or uh, sketch and tune material to just our board object and animate that separately. But I'll get into that a little bit later. So I just wanna go through uh, some of the little workarounds that you have to think about when you're animating strokes so you avoid those little glitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's just say, let's just rename this. Uh, we'll do the, uh, these will be the short strokes. So these will be the strokes that are just on our wheels and everything else. And then we'll apply a separate material to our board. Uh, so going back to the draw speed, this is our start time. So start frame is frame 15. And then the time is actually from frame 15, how long does it take for those strokes to fully draw on? And that's the va and this is the value that we can plug in here. And then we don't have to actually put in any keyframes. It's just controlled by this value. So what we can do is I'm just going to change this to 15 frames. So we can actually have the smaller objects that are stroked 
animate on faster, and our larger objects, which the only large object in the scene is this board, actually have longer time to animate on, so it doesn't look like it's rushed. Uh, because for this, we don't really need that much time to stroke just a small cylinder here. Uh, so that's really all we need to worry about with the material editor here. And so, like I said, we can actually make uh, another, we can duplicate this and go and rename this to long. So these will be the longer strokes or uh, that are applied to our bigger objects or just our board here. And we can have the start time a little bit further on along in time. So you can see in my example that the issue, the jumping occurs around frame 25. So we actually want this object to start or this object strokes to start animating on after this little glitchy period. So I'll have them start at frame 25. And then since this will be a longer uh, stroke line, I'll give it a little bit more time to animate on. So instead of 15 frames like the shorter ones, I'll just bump it up five frames to t uh, 20 frames. And then I need to make sure that when you make that second uh, sketch material, and here's our board, we actually need to uh, apply a sketch style tag if you haven't applied one yet. And you can actually go over, I have a tutorial all about sketch style tags that you need to uh, check out and actually learned how to say sketch style tags. So go me. Uh, so what you wanna do to apply a new sketch material is to replace it in the default visible. So that's just like applying a new material, only this material is just a sketch material. So now we have the long sketch style uh, strokes applied to our uh, long board here, or not a long board, our skateboard here. So now you can actually see some of these strokes animating on in our scene. And basically all you need to do at this point, you can see the, you can see our strokes kind of partially animating on. And what you want to do is kind of like frame by frame, make sure that nothing is kind of jumping here in our render. So that's kind of how I check. So you can see that here's our line and it's going to meet up here. And remember that uh, this is all done by the uh, stroke order here. So remember, the start was at the top, so the topmost point, which is right here, and then it's going to draw counterclockwise and kind of complete the stroke. So these are all these options here that can really change how your uh, stroke animation looks by changing these values. So if I change this to bottom, you'll see that now our stroke is completed, but it needs to actually complete to this uh, bottom spot right about there. So we'll just change that back to top and that's basically it uh, so major things to keep in mind is just this works best animating strokes on works best with either still objects uh, objects that aren't animated or animated objects that are just about to come to rest so the the you want minimal change from frame to frame as far as position or scale or rotation so it doesn't really uh, kind of mess things up and get those uh, kind of jumping lines. Now there is this option in the stroke uh, tab here and the stroke options here of this frame match and that's supposed to help uh, avoid those little glitches there of the jumping but I found in just in my working with this that it doesn't really help. I, I don't notice a much of a difference at all uh, so you can kind of play around with this and maybe it will help you. I don't know. Uh, but so here is my final animation. And so I, you know, I had to render out a few of these just to try to avoid and figure out the timing to try to avoid those popping. So I found out that, you know, all right, well, if I have the short uh, lines that are applied to my smaller objects animate on first, so we have some stroke animation and if I have this uh, long material kind of uh, applied on and have the stroke on my larger object that's given me issues with the popping animate on last or, or animate on later in the animation as everything is set in its final resting spot. So that is this board part here. You can see that this is the final 
uh, animation I made. And you can see that if I go frame by frame here, you can first see my wheels and my little screws here getting uh, the strokes animating on first. And then around frame you know 25, because that's the, the frame that I set uh, in my animation start time here. So frame 25, and then it takes 20 frames for that to fully draw on. So that'll finish at frame uh, 45. And so we can see that I by retiming everything, I totally removed the glitches on that board. So you can see that there's no glitches at all because I've timed everything down where nothing is intersecting the board. Uh, you can kind of see there is a slight glitch when the board overlaps the wheel. Uh, what you could do to try to get rid of that is have everything animate, all, all the strokes animate on before the board intersects it, but it's just like a one frame glitch and I'm not that picky. I'm not going to worry about that. You can barely notice when it's going full speed. Uh, but those are little gotchas you got to kind of worry about uh, when animate on, animating on sketch and tune strokes. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, I really encourage you guys to go out there and play around with this and try that frame match uh, thing and see if that works for you. I haven't had any good luck with it, but uh, this is kind of the workflow I go through to create uh, line art animations and have the strokes animate on. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. And I really encourage you, if you make something with this, uh, definitely share it with me. I love seeing uh, all the stuff that you guys are posting on Twitter and all that good stuff. It really uh, makes me happy to see you guys creating this and getting inspired by this stuff. So uh, I'll see you in the next Sketch and Tune tutorial. See you next time, guys.